Alright, here's a quick video for the Iron Factory EX17 L and S. Uh, Nora Mooney and Muramasa, or Light and Shadow as the L and S would imply. And they're basically the two different versions of Drift. We have Drift as we know him from the comics, and his previous persona as a Decepticon Deadlock here. Drift comes with, as you can see, the swords attached to vehicle mode. Uh, Deadlock or Muramasa has the uh, has guns. He's got some little guns built into his arms, and they do rotate here on these little hinge pieces if you want to have them posed differently in vehicle mode, as well as a couple of long rifles here that peg into the back. And as vehicles, they're a little folded-up robots. I mean, they, they have a vaguely aerodynamic shape, and they're Cybertronian in design, which is kind of a code word for it doesn't make sense but they're from an alien planet and technically he could hover around and fly around as some sort of jet sled so it works and um i would have liked to have seen some cooler vehicle modes i would have liked it if maybe we'd gotten drift as a car um more or more at least more like his i don't know i, I wish the vehicle modes were a little bit more visually engaging i guess is the, is the word i want to work for they're just kind of kind of folded up robots the hands are visible up top and the official transformations do show the hands folded up like this like here on muramasa where you can see them uh but if you want to hide them a little bit better you can rotate them a little bit so they're not quite as obviously fists from most angles on vehicle mode they'll still look like hands from the side but they're not quite as visually obvious from the top if you fold them if you just rotate them there at the wrist you can take the weapons off. The, this sword just plugs in right here. And these are on little pegs here. Personally, I think the swords look weirder here on Noramune than uh, the guns do on Muramasa. The guns here, the way they plug in, they actually look like they're part of the vehicle mode. The swords just look like swords pegged on to the sled. But you can see with the weapons off there, it's just a very generic looking... Maybe it could fly with some boosters back here type of design. Again, like I said, that these guns just peg on. There's a little hole in them that uh, goes over this tab right here on the shoulder piece. There's a little square hole right here at the front of each rifle. They do, since because of the way they fold up the transform, you can angle them up as well in vehicle mode. Go ahead and get those off of here. You can see, despite being the same character, and while they do have the same basic overall transformation, visually they are a little different from each other. Uh, Light has the uh, drift here, has the, has the lower fins, and not so much on top, whereas uh, Deadlock has this little red bit with the fins here and these up you know, vertical golden fins. But uh, you can see the lower lower halves down here. The, 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 the crotch plates are different as well. This one actually has pegs on it. That, that these can peg on to. Uh, actually, this one does too, but the, the shapes are slightly different here on these uh, things, which we'll see in robot mode. The transformation, though, is exactly the same for the two of them, and that you fold these down, little shoulder pads down, untab the arms from the side of the torso. You see these little tabs go in here, and then the legs come out. You want to bring the foot down. They're kind of holding these hinges in. Open up this little circular piece here on the inside of the leg. And then the legs collapse a lot like Combiner Wars figures. You bring the joint up. And once it's fully extended, you close this cap and this little tab right here will peg into the circle piece. To lock it in and then rotate it forward. Bring the foot all the way down. Some of the joints on these are very tight. Uh, this, this ankle joint on drift was super tight on both legs on mine almost to the point where i thought i was going to break them and there's there's a few little places that are tight and part of that just comes from the size when you have a really stiff joint on a figure this small these little pieces can lift up a little bit you want to be extra careful because because of the size that those joints are very tiny you don't want to risk snapping and also these elbow joints here the first time i transformed these have gotten a little better since uh the first transformation but these elbow joints here were also super tight on the first time i transformed it so if you get one brand new uh, do be aware of that and take some caution when uh collapsing them up for the first time they come packaged in robot mode then you turn his head around 
And there he is in robot mode. These gun, uh, not guns, these swords uh, can peg onto the waist here. They can be held in his hand as well. And again, if you rotated the wrists, rotate the wrists forward so the hands face the proper way. Be held like that, and the larger sword can plug into that same hole it was on in vehicle mode to sit across his back. So you can store all the weapons on him or have him hold them. Personally, I like to just have these two on, the, on his hip skirts and then uh, have him hold the long sword. But it's entirely up to you. Now when he's holding as a sword, that big peg is a little bit of an eyesore, especially on a figure this size since it's a standard 5mm peg, but um, not too bad. Bring the shoulders down, which will give him a little bit more clearance here. So there's the drift version in robot mode. And like I said, it's exactly the same thing here for deadlock. You gotta unpeg these, it looks like I already knocked one of those out. And extend the arms down. Now his joints, while still tight, were not nearly as scary as Drift's version was. Uh, they were they were a little loose right off the bat, except this one of these hinges here was really tight. I think it was this one right here. It was super tight where I almost felt like I was going to break it untabbing it. But it's the same process. Bring the feet down. Extend the joint. Lock this into place. Rotate the legs forward. Bring the arms down. Fold these down right here, rotate his head around, just like that, and then uh, bring those around, and there he is in robot mode. And this is where these guys really shine. Iron Factory makes some really good figures, and like I said, it was almost a little disappointing to see those vehicle modes because they're usually so good at getting some alt modes on both ends of it. Uh, but their robot modes really shine, and honestly, let's face it, a lot of people, why you could display them in vehicle mode, and some people do, I, I do think a majority of collectors display their figures in robot mode, so, uh, you know, you've got that option, and that's really where you're, like I said, I don't blame them for focusing on the robot modes, that's the, the appeal. Also, these little panels right here that were on the top fold in behind the legs to fill them in. forgot to do that on drift, we'll do that in just a second. So yeah, so you don't have any gaps in there. And like I said, the robot modes are really nice. This little waist, uh, here's the, the back panel that can lift up and down on both of them. And you can see they are different. Uh, it's more armored. It doesn't have this little squarish or rectangular piece on here, but it's got a couple little silver panels there, whereas his is a little truncated and doesn't have the detail. Again, the little forearm guns can rotate if you wish to use them like that. And he can hold both of his rifles. It does look like he's got some peg holes up here, or maybe, no, it doesn't work. It looked like maybe you could use these to maybe peg them onto his shoulders, but you can't. So he's got to hold his rifles. He doesn't really have, I guess you could conceivably, you might be able to, nah, it doesn't look like, you probably wouldn't have the clearance, but the tab is up there. You might be able to find a position in which you could tab those on to the shoulders, but he's going to look better with them in his hands anyway, I think. But you can see the differences between the two, different head sculpts, uh, the different chest, chest plates, um, despite having the same transformation, and they do share some parts, a lot of the, uh, the lower legs especially are, are very similar, although this guy does have the little side pieces here are different between the two of them. The main leg pieces are identical. They're just distinguished by paint. But the upper body, like I said, the, ar the arms look like they may share. The forearms may be the same, except this one's obviously molded to allow the guns. So it's nice to see that, like, despite sharing a transformation scheme, and a similar vehicle mode. They are visually distinctive here in robot mode. They're quite poseable. Um, they've got a little ball joint head. Can't look up so much because of the way the head hits this back plate here, but they are there. They've got hinges here at the shoulder, ball joints within the shoulder itself, uh, hinge there at the elbow. Uh, you've got the ball joint here in the forearm piece as well as the transformation hinge, so you can get some decent, well, can, not so much with his gun in the way, but. You can get a pretty decent forearm bend out of them. There's the aforementioned wrist swivel. Uh, no bicep swivel because of the way that hinge works. Waist swivel, which 
is not required for any part of transformation, but it's nice that they put that in to figure this small. Ball joint hips, rotating thighs, hinge knees. Again, you can get it up to about 90 degrees with that panel in place. If you flip that panel out, you can get a little bit more. Not much, but a little bit. And then hinged. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me again. Um, hinged feet. There's a ball joint down in the foot itself. So there's much like the elbow, there's a rotational hinge for transformation as well as a ball joint down in the foot itself. So if you bring that hinge all the way down, you get some ankle tilt and a little bit more opposability out of the foot. But yeah, nice little representations of drift in robot mode. Uh, just a quick size comparison with their Iron Factory Scorponok. You can see they're much smaller, but these are more in scale with a lot of the figures that Iron Factory has made. Scorponok kind of is too, because he's supposed to be a larger character. But these are more the size of the other figures in the line. Here they are with the Deluxe Class Transformer. That's Cup. I mostly just like to show him off because I'm really still digging Cup. But uh, I know he's fairly new. Uh, if you have Skull Cruncher, he's got the Alligator Megatron head from the Convo Bat set. But with Skull Cruncher, just to give an idea of about how tall they are, they're about half the size of a Deluxe, roughly the size of a Legends class figure. So yeah, um, I really dig the quality and the scale and the designs that Iron Factory has been putting out. Their Scorponok is great. I'm looking forward to seeing the, their Jinrai. Um, what else is going to Six Shot? I have, I have Jinrai and Six Shot on the way, so we'll check those out soon. But uh, they've got the wing, uh, they've got the uh, Starscream, the Seekers coming out. Uh, a lot of good stuff coming out from Iron Factory. I'm really looking forward to seeing some of the stuff they've got coming down the pipeline. I, I'm not a big fan of Drift. Um, I don't mind him. So uh, I don't have a huge attachment to these guys, but it is nice that you got both versions, both his Decepticon Deadlock persona and his Autobot Drift persona. But yeah, another, more good quality figures from Iron Factory here with these guys. Personally, I think if you've got the money and you don't have Lord Scorpion, get Lord Scorpion. Lord Scorpion is outstanding. I love him. But yeah, um, so to sum up, pros... Their robot modes are great and poseable, and they look really nice. Um, cons, I wish... like They do share a transformation scheme. That's not really a con. That's more of a neutral. Um, but I do, I do wish their vehicle modes were a little bit more visually exciting. Like I said, I, I just wish they, they looked more than just, I'm a folded-up robot that can pass as a Cybertronian thing. There are some Cybertronian designs that I really, really dig... But I think a lot of times when you say Cybertronian mode, it's kind of an unspoken, eh. So, you know, like I said, uh, Make Toys, uh, their Striker Man is like, it's kind of a Cybertonian truck. Uh, and I dig that one. That's like, that's like what I, what I feel is a, is a really cool Cybertronian type design. In this case, this is a, it's a vehicle because we say it is, which is a little disappointing, especially considering all of the great figures that Iron Factory has put out. But um, I feel like they make up for it in their robot modes. So there it is, Iron Factory EX-17L and S, uh, Light and Shadow, Noramune, and Maramasa. I may be butchering those names. I apologize if I am. Uh, it's late. <laughs> but yeah, there they are. Uh, if you're into Drift or Deadlock, they're neat little figures you could add to your collection. Like I said, personally, I would go with Lord Scorpion or... Uh, Six Shot looks good, but I haven't had it. I can't recommend Six Shot or Jinra yet because I have not actually had them in hand. Um, but overall, I've been fairly impressed with the uh, Iron Factory line, and I'm looking forward to some of the stuff that they've got in the pipeline because it looks really neat. So yeah, Iron Factory EFX 17 or EX 17 LNS. I dig them. <laughs>